Hi, I'm Angela Wolf. I'm a fashion designer and online instructor. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take quilting, all the hours you spend on that, and instead of throwing it on a wall or on a bed, you're gonna to get to wear it. There's one big difference here too, which I'll show you in a minute, but let me show you this jacket. From the outside, it just looks like a regular jacket, very conservative, but on the inside, this is actually one of my signatures, crazy lining. But can you see these lines of stitching? The lining is actually quilted to the outside of the garment, but you can't see the stitches. Even this one here. This is a tweed fabric, and on the inside, another crazy lining, and again, rows of stitching. It might be a little hard for you to see on these because the thread matches, but those are a lot of rows all the way around the jacket. This really is easier than you think. So, here I have a skirt, tweed. The key is to find a tweed fabric. What I mean by tweed is see all of these rows. You can see the, the weave of the fabric really well. This one you really can because it's different colors. The key to this process is that you're gonna stitch right down the grain line on, these, on this tweed, which I've done here, and you cannot see it, and on the inside, you can. I used white thread in the bobbin, and I used, well, I think that was like a light gray, just to match, this is a hand-dyed lining, and then black on the top, and you cannot see it. So why would you do this? Because it actually makes your jacket feel more like a sweater. I do this a lot on my skirts as well. There's my lining. See the rows of stitching? Now one thing to notice on this skirt, because when I explain this later, you'll understand. At the bottom of your rows of quilting, you always leave two inches, sometimes more, but two inches from the edge. Not two inches from the hem allowance, but two inches from the edge where the hem is finished. Why is that? Because we need to fold up the hem, fold under the lining, press. You need room to do that. At the top, you leave two inches as well. Again, you can, this one has a fold-in waistband, a facing. So I had room to put the facing, and then all of this lining is hand-stitched. Gives you a good view of it. Now on the skirt, there's no interfacing on this fabric at all. It's just the tweed and the silk. Let's take a closer look at this jacket. Again, this is a tweed. I did not use any interfacing or padding inside of this jacket. Now when you're quilting, usually you'll have a padding or a fleece or something. There's nothing. All there is is lining and the jacket. And before I show you the process, take a good look at this. You can see the rows of stitching. This jacket I've worn quite a few times, so it's a little wrinkled. And look at this line here. You know what that is? That's your seam line, because you actually quilt every single pattern piece first, then stitch your jacket together, then you have to hand stitch your lining closed. So it's a very couture process. It takes a long time, but you'll get to wear it, and it's really comfortable. So let's take a closer look at this fabric. Here I have, this is one jacket I've cut out. By the way, I'm just gonna warn you, once you do this to your jacket once, you will be so addicted to the feel of it that you'll have to, you'll have to quilt every jacket you have. So this is a tweed, kind of a loose, I believe this is an acetate blend. And you can see the hand of it, just kind of, it's very nice. You could interface this, but you can't see through it, so you don't have to. If you have a really, really loose fabric where you can see through, you definitely want to use a fusible interfacing. Just a lightweight, it helps to stabilize your fabric. So this is my entire jacket pattern cut out. My red dots, the reason for that is because the front and the back look very similar. There is a difference, but if you're working and you're tired and you're not paying attention, all of a sudden you're gonna sew two right sides accidentally. So this is what your fabric looks like. Notice how much it frays. You'll be coated by the time you finish this. So here is the next step. This is my front, side front, and I've already attached the interfacing. This is just a lightweight, fusible interfacing. I left a little bit free so you could kind of see what that is. And what I do is I take each piece to the iron and attach it. No steam with your iron, just press and hold. Make sure you don't take the iron 
and do this because you can end up with little puckers in your interfacing. That's the next step. And then lastly, I run everything through the serger. All the pieces. That helps get all the fraying finished. So this is another jacket I'm working on. And I just want to get to the bottom here of these last two pieces. OK, even the sleeves, you do the same thing. Everything's coated with interfacing and surged. You're ready to go. Unless you're not using interfacing, then I would just surge the edges. So here is what you end up with. And I'm going to show you how to do this. But see these rows? Every single piece is going to be like this. You cut the lining a little bit wider. Why? Because when you do the quilting, it shrinks up just a little bit on the back side. So cut it a little bit wider. It gives you extra room. And imagine that this is going to be folded in and covered and hand stitched. So you need that extra fabric. Now, this is a silk lining, and it's fraying really bad. But you could serge it, like I did on this one, or just leave it. This is the sleeve. And I have one more here of the whole entire piece. This is what you end up with. I sew the entire body together, every pattern piece, and then I hand stitch the linings in place. All right. Well, let's get started and show you how to cut this lining. Here are my two pieces I'm going to use. This is a silk lining. If you have a rotary mat and cutter, this is the best way to do this. Because if, you, if you're cutting, you can kind of, with your scissors, you're lifting the fabric too much. It's not the end of the world. Just make sure you pin your pattern pieces in place if you don't have a rotary mat. Just making sure this covers all the way. Actually, I think I'll go. Let's go this way. Again, this is a silk charmeuse lining, hand dyed. Silk charmeuse, china silk, um, even suede silk. Those are great linings to use for this. It's better to use a silk or a natural fiber fabric. Actually, that's not the match. Because when you, after you quilt this, you have to press it. And natural fiber fabrics, they just are much better than a polyester for this. Here we go. So my side front and my side back. There's nothing magical to cutting this out. Just a square. And I'm going to take this piece here. And I have a hand needle. And I'm just going to hand baste this piece to the lining. Very loose. I'm using a purple thread just so you can see it. Obviously, you'd want to pick something to match. All the way up. And the last thing that I'm going to do, I'll just leave that needle in there for now. I have some chalk here, and I'll use, see which color you can see better. Actually, I think you'll see the white. You want to leave two inches around everything, the top. And I'm just going to eyeball this, but I'm going to mark it in chalk, because if you go inside those lines, you have no place to fold back your seam allowance and press that lining. Now, this is a, a small jacket. If you're a larger jacket, if you're a larger size, you'll have more rolls of quilting than I will. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and show you how to do this. Take another look at this hand basting stitch here. Now, you'll probably want to do a few more rows the first time you do this to keep this stable. You can see it from the back side. The purpose of doing that is to keep your lining and this fabric both on grain. Again, keeping two inches from all the edges. I'm just going to put a pin here just to mark it for myself. Two inches from this edge and two inches from this edge. This really only allows for a few rows of quilting. And your quilting lines can be one inch, one and a half, whatever you want them to be. I'm going to just do one row here just to show you how this works. Again, I'm going to take that pin out. I'm lining my needle right in that grain line. And I'm going to stitch all the way down right in this grain line here. 
I'm using, on, for, so you can see this, I'm actually using a 3.0 stitch length, but you would want to use a 2.0, 2.5 at the most, because you don't want to be able to see it from the right side of the fabric. And you're gonna stitch all the way down. Again, following, and my hem plus two inches. I'm just about there, so I have a one inch hem and two inches. So that's three inches left at the bottom. There we go, I use purple thread again, just so you can see. Looks like I got a little curvy there, but it's pretty close to being on the grain line. And on the back side, you can see what you end up with. If you have a walking foot, that is a great foot to use with this. Again, you're gonna trim off the edges all the way around your fabric piece, leaving about that much room. I already have a piece, I'm gonna show you how to press this. This is a sleeve. You can see both pieces are quilted. I've already pressed the seam open. And how you're gonna prepare the lining is you press one lining piece closed, just like this, and take the other one over. You're wrapping that seam. And now fold it so this fold lines up right with the center of that seam. I can feel it with my finger. You can't see it, but you just have to trust me on that. You'll feel it. Pressing, using your clapper to make sure it stays there. And I would do this all the way down the seam, but I'm just gonna do a little piece here for you. You can do that all the way down. You'll do that for all of your seams. Now let me, next thing you have to do is hand stitch. Again, you would have sewn together all, you would have quilted all of your pieces, then sew them together, and then press your lining. I'm just giving you a little excerpt of how this works. So this lining would have been pressed all the way down, and then you hand stitch. I'm starting in the middle because this is the only area we pressed, but you really start at one end and go all the way up. And all I'm gonna do is a very small slip stitch. Attaching, I'm grabbing just a little bit of the seam allowance, and both pieces of lining. The idea is to not see this stitch. Very small. See how that looks nicely? Make sure you don't pull too tight where you end up with wrinkles, and then you'll press that out. Again, look at this here. This has been hand stitched all the way down. Now this is my sleeve, and I actually do the whole sleeve before I insert it into the jacket. This was folded under. Here I have a sleeve vent. So you can see where I actually, before I closed this layer, I stitched that whole underside of the sleeve, leaving the hem open. And then I went back, leaving the hem open again, stitched all the way up. All of this is hand stitched. This is all the machine stitching and this is all hand stitched. The other thing, after you do this, make sure you give it a good pressing. Make sure that you don't have any puckers through your lining. And the other thing right here, see these threads? You need to pull these to the inside of the fabric here. So it's a lot of hand stitching. Let me just show you the vent one more time from the right side, because you can't tell this at all. All of this is hand stitched. All of this is hand stitched. So you can see this jacket will take quite a few hours. In fact, 40 plus hours, depending on what you're doing with the trim and everything. But you get to wear it. It feels like a sweater. After you make one of these, you're gonna to wanna to have one of all of your jackets. With every fabric you buy, you're gonna think, how could I quilt that lining?